Hi, welcome to English today. We're learning music from the heart. It's a lesson for 11th grade, four points. My name is Arielle Blecher. Let's, let's go. Today, what are we doing today? Today we will learn vocabulary, we'll learn about a very special teacher, and we'll learn about the importance of music. Okay, is music important to you? Let's find out. How does music make you feel? Think about music. When do you listen to music? Do you listen when you're with your friends? Do you listen in the car? Do you listen on your, on your telephone when you're taking a walk? How does it make you feel? Do you play an instrument? Instrument is clean again, right? Do you play? Maybe you play the trumpet or the guitar or the piano or the violin. Do you feel pride when you play your instrument for others? Are you when you think about how you are playing these instruments for others and how they feel, or when you accomplish learning a new song if you play an instrument? We're going to learn some vocabulary that will be in the lesson today. I'll go over the, the, the words with you, and I'll give you some examples of how we use them in every day. Okay? First, impressed. Hitrashem. I was very impressed with the doctor who knew exactly what was wrong with my grandmother. Impressed. Determination. Nechishut. A student has a lot of determination when they want to excel at their lesson. Students, tell me, Dean, you guys are all my students right now. You are learning from me. You are my students. Empower. Laatzin. To empower someone is to make them feel that they can do anything. A teacher can empower a student. Ability, yecholet. Everyone has their own abilities and things that they are good at and things that they are not so great at. Decide, lechlit. I decide what I want to eat each day for breakfast. Proven, muchach. Um, proven, it is proven that um, vitamin C can sometimes help people prevent from getting the flu. Academic, academy. Someone who is an academic is someone who is very knowledgeable in a certain subject, okay? An academic could be someone who works for a university. Perseverance, hatmada. Someone has perseverance, it means that they want to continue to do something again and again. They can persevere that's also the verb form of perseverance, okay? The runner persevered and achieved the accomplishment of doing the Ironman last year. Um, perform, nohofia. To perform is to get up in front of a crowd and to create a play for someone is to perform, okay? Performance would be the actual play itself. The play about the Wizard of Oz is a performance that you can see on stage in Tel Aviv. Moved, okay, a vardiva, someone who has moved, someone who has moved to from one home to another home. Young, sa'ir, you are all young, you are all very sa'ir. <laughs> um, violin, kinar, a violin is an instrument that is made of strings. We will learn about it in the text. Violinist is a kanar, a kanar is someone who plays the violin. We show men again at the violin, okay? Cancel, levatel. Unfortunately, school has been canceled. Uh, we do not have lessons today in our school. We have lessons online. Enough, must speak. Okay, must speak means I have finished something, I am done, I have had enough. There we go. Let's move on to the actual text. A young teacher moves to New York City. Roberta Gasperi moved to East Harlem, a neighborhood in New York City, with her two young sons. She needed a job. She was a violin teacher. She asked the local New York City Central Park East School to hire her as a violin teacher. Okay, so what did we learn? Let's look at who are we talking about? We're talking about Roberta. Okay, R Roberta Gasperi. Where did she move? She moved to East Harlem. Okay, notice that we have a capital E and a capital H here. 
okay? That is to show us that this is the name of a place, okay? East Harlem is an area in New York City. I don't know if any of you have been to New York City, but New York City is made of a lot of different neighborhoods. East Harlem is the higher numbered uh, area, I would say East 125th Street to 160th Street uh, is considered the neighborhood of East Harlem. Um, in the past, many different nationalities lived in Harlem. Um, many African-American people lived there, Dominican uh, people lived there, Puerto Rican people, and also many European uh, immigrants to America lived there as well. So she moved there with her two young sons. Okay, that's more information. What did she need? She needed a job. Okay, Abu Dha. What was her specialty? She was a violin teacher. Okay, she played the violin. Violin, I'm not sure if you remember that word from the vocabulary, is the kinar. Kinor, sicha. Um, she was a kanar. She was a violinist, and she knew that she could get a job as a violin teacher. She asked the New York City Central Park East School to hire her. Okay, that's a long name of a school, but that is the name of the school to hire her. Let's move on. Here's a picture of Roberta Gaspari playing the violin. This is the actual teacher who we are speaking of. This is a true story, okay? Cause and effect. When we have cause and effect. It is one thing that causes another thing uh, to happen, okay? So cause and effect. You could say, if you take a ball right now in your room and you drop it, okay, the cause is the action of dropping the ball. It will then hit the floor and then maybe it will bounce. So dropping the ball causes the ball to bounce. Do you understand the concept? Another cause and effect would be if you um, have a bottle of water and you take a sip, you drink some of that water, okay? And then you feel satisfied because you drink the water, okay? Cause and effect, okay? What is explained in the first paragraph that we just read? We have a violin teacher who moved. She was looking for a new job. She finds a new job in East Harlem, okay? Very simple ta'alikh of what was happening in that paragraph. Let's move on. Miss Gasperi teaches violin. Do you see that we have a picture of a violin on this screen? Okay, Miss Gasperi loved teaching her young students. She created a special program called the Strings Program. She would teach large groups of students the elements of playing the violin. At the end of the school year, the school had to cancel the program. They did not have enough funds to continue the sting strings program. Let's go over this slowly, okay? She loved teaching her young students. We learned that she really enjoyed her job, okay? She created a program called the strings program. Why is it called the strings program? Do you notice on this violin, there are strings on this instrument, okay? Those strings are what create the music when you play the instrument. Okay, other string instruments would be a cello. Another string instrument could be a guitar also. All of these instruments have strings and in order to make a sound or make music from them, you have to play with the strings or use a bow on the strings. This is called a bow, okay? That is called a bow, B-O-W. And these are strings, S-T-R-I-N-G-S, excellent. Okay, she would teach large groups of students the elements of playing the violin. At the end of the school year, though, they had to cancel the program. Why did they have to cancel it? Because there weren't enough funds. If you don't know what the word funds is, okay, let's go over that for a minute. First of all, if you were reading this by yourself, you would try and figure it out from the context of what's going on. If a school can't have a program, then it means that they don't have something in order to maybe pay for the program. Funds means money, okay? They didn't have enough money to continue the program, okay? It's just a fancy word for money. You can also use the word funding, okay? A um, Hadassah hospital has a lot of funding to pay the doctors and the nurses that are uh, helping their patients. Funding, it means the money that's coming in to that organization. All right, let's move on. What did the students and parents do? Okay, so let's think a minute. Uh, the program's canceled. Do you think that people were upset? I bet they were. So let's find out what did they do to 
help the situation. What was the cause and effect here? Okay, we have this idea again. The students and parents decided to help Ms. Gasparri continue to teach violin to her students. Together, they created the Opus 118 Music Center. She knew that the violin lessons helped students improve their academic performance. Okay, so they, what did they do? They decided to help her, the parents, students and parents decided to get together and help. How did they help? They created the Opus 118 Music Center. That's the name of the music center that she created. And these violin lessons, she wanted to continue them. Why? Because she knew that it helps students improve their academic performance. And let's just say for a second, if you were reading this at home and you did not understand what these words mean, think about it in the context of what we're doing. We're learning about a woman teaching violin out of school, and she knows that her students improve their academic performance. Now, we know the word performance means ahofa'a, but that doesn't really make sense, okay? They're not, sure, they are performing in front of a crowd, but we have the word academic. Academic means that it has to do with the way that they're studying, okay? It comes from the word academy, okay? A place of study, okay? Someone who is an academic, it means that they are appreciating the things that they are learning and they are trying to improve themselves. This woman, this teacher, Roberta Gasperi, she knew that the students were not just learning violin. They were learning how to be good students, okay? What happens when you practice an instrument? You have to practice it again and again and again every day in order to excel. Uh, if you guys, let's say you play guitar, okay? I bet you notice that if you keep practicing that one song that you are teaching yourself every day, you improve. You also realize that maybe you, if you make a schedule to keep practicing, that also helps you. And then suddenly you say to yourself, wow, if I do this with just my guitar playing, I could do this with just about anything. I could make a whole schedule of how I could study all of my subjects better. There is a way that the music lessons were helping these students in other ways. And Roberta Gasperi wanted to continue that. And so did the students and parents. What do you think? Let's look here for a second. The students improved their academic studies. Okay, we talked about that before, academic studies. How? Why do you think that students perform better in their classes due to learning music? We talked about that. Okay, do you see this picture I've got here? Practice makes perfect. Practice means to do something over and over and over again. The more you repeat it, the better you do. I am sure you see that in your own life. The more that you repeat something that you love to do, you become better at it. The more you keep reading English, I bet that your English improves, okay? The more you speak English, your English learning skills um, and speaking skills will improve. It's just a known fact. It, the more you practice anything, the better you will do. Determined students keep playing music. Okay, determined. Okay, de let's read this and understand what does that really mean. Miss Gasparri's Opus 118 music students continued to practice. One day, they were asked to perform in Carnegie Hall. Yitzhak Perlman, a famous Israeli violinist, attended the performance he was truly impressed by the determination of the students. All right, let's go over this piece by piece. All right, so Ms. Gasparis, okay, Opus 118 students, we talked about that, that's her new group. Okay, they continued to practice, and, okay? They were going over the material, getting better at making music together, and they were asked to perform in Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall is a beautiful, um, establishment in New York City that homes many, many performances, many hofa'ot of music and opera. Um, it is a place that is very highly acclaimed and esteemed. If someone plays at Carnegie Hall, it means that they are extremely important. And these children were asked to perform there. And then 
Yitzchak Perlman, I don't know if you are familiar with who he is, um, Yitzchak Perlman is a famous Israeli violinist who currently lives in New York, but he was asked to come to the performance and he agreed, and that, which is really amazing. I'm sure he's a very busy man and he agreed to come. And I know that we can probably say that he actually enjoyed it. <laughs> um, he was really impressed. We can say that because he was impressed by the determination of the students. He knew that they were doing hard work. Okay, and he was pressed. Rashamalov, he was like, wow, look what these kids did. Look where they came from. They came from a small school in East Harlem, and they actually performed in this beautiful hall. Later on, we will see an actual video of Yitzhak Perlman and the students together. It's really quite amazing. Um, you should realize that it's not every day that someone famous like this would get involved with a group of kids. It takes a very special teacher to make this happen. And Roberto Gasperi did that. And she, she realized that her students loved playing music and she wanted to share that with them and with this amazing violinist, Yitzhak Perlman. The power of music. Miss Gasperi truly loves her job. She believes that music empowers these children with the ability to make something beautiful that allows them to believe in themselves and know that they are special. Let's look at this quote and try and think about what does this mean? What does it mean to empower children? Okay, to empower someone is to give them power, to give them koach, okay? So to empower a child is to give them the the ability to do something. Okay, la sot is a macho she he Okay, something that she thinks they can do, that they are they can do. Okay, that is what empowerment is. And she was doing that because she allowed them to believe in themselves and know that they are special. What does that mean? To believe in yourself to think that, yes, I can do it, I can do anything, and to know that I am a special person and I have abilities that are beyond what anyone else knows. And if I believe in myself, okay, then I definitely can share that with others. And she knew that her students could do that. If you look at this picture, it's a picture of Roberta and her students on the stage in Carnegie Hall. I want you to think about this for a few minutes while we're going to be taking a break in a, in a bit. Think about how a teacher can empower a student. Do you have an example of that in your own life? Or can you think of a way that you possibly can empower yourself? I want you to think about that and think about what we've learned so far about these children in New York City and Roberta Gasperi and how she helped them learn something new and help them believe in their themselves, okay? Take out a notebook, jot down a few notes while we take this break, all right? I look forward to hearing what you have to say.
Hi. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the break. Uh, we were talking about the power of music and how power, the power that the children have uh, gives them an ability to make something really beautiful and to believe in themselves. I hope you jotted a few things down in your notebook of things that help you believe in yourself. Let's move on to the next slide. A movie was made about this story, and I would really love to share it with you. I think it's just um, a great example of what happened with Roberta Gasperi. And here's a little tidbit of what happened in this story of her, exam her determination to work with her students in New York City. This can Come in. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't I'm mean sorry, to interrupt. Janet, just... I just wanted you to meet my boys. Uh, this is Nick. Hi. Hi. And Lexi. Hi. I'm sorry. Hi. Oh, I'm Roberta Gaspari Demetrius. Dennis Whoa. Rausch, our music teacher and program coordinator. Mrs. Demetrius, did I not make myself clear yesterday? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I just wanted to show you something. <laughs> just take a second. Ready, boys? Are we having a talent show? I should have brought my tap shoes. Five, six, ready, and... been playing since I was three and and you mm, maybe since I was three and a half your mom must be a pretty good teacher huh she's okay you guys wait up there okay okay so Mrs. Demetrius if you could teach our, our, our students to play as well as they do I, I'd be thrilled but I I could any any child can learn to play the violin assuming they had the discipline well I would <laughs> teach them to have discipline Mrs. Demetrius a lot of our parents are struggling to feed their kids, to pay the rent. They don't have time to help them learn violin. Well, they wouldn't have to. They wouldn't have to. I mean, it would be great if they wanted to help, but uh, these kids are going to be committed, you know? They would, they would practice on their own, and they'd help each other in the classroom. I think I know these students, Miss uh, Demetrius. Mrs. Mrs. Demetrius. And I can tell you right now, their attention span doesn't go past do re me. You know, maybe on a good day, I can get them to fa. I think you're underestimating them. They can learn to play as well as any other kids. Oh, that I'd like to see. Well, you will, or you would. <laughs> I tell you what. I'll put you down as a sub. <gasps> for now. <gasps> Thank you very much. But, but even if it works out, the board may not let me create a permanent position for you. That's okay. Anything is okay. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I have already oh, planned out the whole much. term, and I can tell you right now there is no room for this. Besides, where are you going to find money for violins? Oh, you need violins? Yeah. Okay. So we just saw the video of when Ms. Gus Berry actually got the job. Uh, for the school that she wanted to teach violin at, okay, and to start her special program. Um, let's move on. Let's review the events in our story that we have learned so far. Okay, we have Miss Gasberry needs a job, okay, she goes to the local school and starts violin program. She starts a program called the Strings Program. Do you remember what we said strings are? Strings are instruments that are made with strings, like a violin, a cello, a guitar, those all have strings. Okay, many children learn in her strings program how to play the violin, and the program is canceled due to a lack of funds. They don't have enough money to pay for the program. Okay, then 
students and parents get together with Ms. Gasberry and they create the Opus 118, 118 program and children attend her program and they begin to perform in a big hall. We said they perform in Carnegie Hall and they perform better in school because of their involvement with this music program. Let's do some questions and answers, okay? Who is Roberta Gasperi? A, she is a drama teacher. B, she is an art teacher. C, she is a soccer player. Or D, she is a violin teacher. Let's go over each answer and try and make sense of it. A, is she a drama teacher? Well, drama, we didn't talk about that. Drama has to do with uh, performing on a stage and making plays. She's not doing that. Is she an art teacher? Is she teaching art? Art en minute? No, she is not. Is she a soccer player? No, she's not playing football. Football is soccer in, uh, <laughs> they're both called soccer. Cadolego is either soccer or football. D, is she a violin teacher? Yes, she is. That's what we learned. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. What happened to the strings program? Okay, remember the strings program? That was the program that she started uh, to teach the children violin. The, A, the program lasted for 20 years. B, the program started dance lessons. C, the program was canceled. D, the program was unsuccessful. Let's go back and go through each answer and try and find the correct answer. A, the program lasted for 20 years. Um, no, we did not see that. B, the program started dance lessons. No, we have no indication that this started dance at all. Ricodim or dance, no. C, the program was canceled. Uh, yes, we did learn that, but let's look at D just to make sure. The program was unsuccessful. What does that mean? Loetzliach. Okay, so that is not true either. So C is the proper answer. When you're answering questions like these in uh, your Bagriot, take a minute to read through the answers, understand what they are giving you as choices, and then go back and make the final proper decision. Don't jump the gun and choose something quickly because sometimes there may be a better answer. Take your time, read it slowly, understand what they're saying, what, what is written, excuse me, and then make an educated decision for your answer. Question number three. Ms. Gasperi believed that the music can help students achieve excellence in other school subjects. Okay, let's go over the question. She believed that music can help students achieve excellence in other school subjects. Well, do you remember the quote we had that said she, she believed that music helps students achieve academic performance, meaning helps them become better students in all of their other subjects, okay? That's what we're talking about. All right, so what would you say? Is this true or false? True, nahon, false, no nahon. This answer is true, okay? Question four. Who was the famous Israeli violinist that attended the performance of the students? Do you remember his name? You remember? Yitzchak Perelman was the famous violinist who attended the performance. Okay, Yitzchak Perelman attended the performance. Okay, here I made a full sentence. It is appropriate to answer a question in a full sentence. Okay, that is definitely needed and necessary. Okay, I have a great video that interviews the kids from this Opus 118, and I thought you'd like to see an example of who these children really are. Let's have a look. My name is Cheyenne Ivy, and I started playing the violin when I was, I think, four or five years old. When I was two years old, I started playing violin. And my violin was kind of the size of my violin back right now.
What's been your most memorable experience at Opus 118? My first lesson was Charlene. What's been your most memorable experience at Opus 118? <laughs> I guess playing with like the big stars like Diana Monroe and like Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Yeah. And going to Carnegie Hall before them. Yeah. Oh, and the inaugural inaugural ball yeah. in Washington DC. Yeah, that was a big one. What is your favorite thing about playing violin? Uh, it's I mean, a lot of people give me credit because it's kind of really hard. So I guess yeah, I agree with that. It's a really hard instrument to learn. I like playing the violin because when I'm mad about something, I can just pick up my violin and it helps me like. Okay, we just saw this great video of children who have been part of the Opus 118 program with Roberta Gasperi, and they were talking about their experiences being a student and learning with her and learning with other children. We learned about children who started at a very young age, how to play violin. We learned about also students who actually graduated the program named Simu at the program, <laughs> okay, and they actually became teachers themselves of other students. So what a wonderful circle this is that of completion that students that started with Roberta are now continuing the process of teaching other students and giving back to others. It's just a wonderful idea. Okay. We have a quote that Roberta says in the movie. Uh, remember I showed you a clip of the movie, Music from the Heart, uh, which I highly suggest that you watch on your own at some other time. Roberta says to her students before they have a very big performance, I want you all to take a second and just breathe. Deep breaths. Now listen to me. I want you all to play from your heart. Forget about the audience. Watch me. You'll all do just fine. Just play from your heart. Let's look at this quote because it's really so beautiful. She's, she knows that her students are extremely nervous and she tells them, I want you all to just take a second. What does that mean, take a second? Just chill for a daka, okay? And just breathe. What does it mean to breathe? Linshom. Okay, linchoma mok. Okay, deep breaths, linchoma mok. Okay, you can do that now too if you'd like. You could take a deep breath with me now. And then she says, now listen to me. Takshivu. I want you all to play from your heart. What does that mean to play music from your heart? She wants her students to give it their all. She wants them to not be nervous not be balachats, 
to just think about playing the music that they've been practicing for months, okay? Forget about the audience, okay? Don't think about what is an audience. An audience is the people who are actually there listening to the performance, all the people who are sitting at the hofa'a and listening and participating and clapping uh, after they have performed. Don't worry about them. Just watch me, she says. Just watch me, your teacher, and you will all do just fine. This should be F-I-N-E. Okay, sorry, that was a misprint. Just play from your heart. Play from your heart. That means play from your lev, okay? Use your neshama, your heart, as you play. It's a wonderful rayon for anything in life. When you're doing anything, do it from here, okay? And do it with the proper feeling. What do you think? Do you think that music affects others? Do you think music can change your mood? How does it do that? How does music help you change your mood? If you're in a, in a down, sour mood and you put on your favorite song on your cell phone or in your room, on your radio, or however else you listen to music online through YouTube, how does it make you feel? Does it improve your behavior? Does it give you a good feeling? Do you think music could help people perform better on tests? Um, do you think that, as we saw here, the people who are playing music and they are performing music and they are practicing music, does that actually change the way that they are as a student in a classroom? Remember, we talked about practice makes perfect. Someone who is playing an instrument and is learning how to perfect that instrument, they have to constantly be making sure that they have in their schedule of their day how to practice that instrument and how to perform well. And that affects their whole way of looking at their ma'arechet, their schedule for their entire day. It doesn't just affect the way that they're playing the instrument. It affects their entire universe. I have a son who plays trumpet, and the minute he started taking his trumpet lessons seriously, he started making a daily schedule of how he was going to practice. And then he realized, well, if I'm making a trumpet schedule, then I'm going to make a schedule for every day of what I do once I get home after school. When, when do I eat? When do I study? When do I do sport? When do I practice my trumpet? And it changed his life. It can do wonders for anyone. Um, so this is what we were talking about here, about what do you think? I wanted to know your opinion. Write down in your notebook for a minute what your opinion is about music and how it affects you. Take a minute, jot a couple things down. List one, two, three. It doesn't have to be perfect sentences, just to kind of get your ideas flowing. We have learned a lot of things today. We learned vocabulary. We learned about a woman in New York City who is teaching an amazing uh, violin program, the Strings program. What did we talk about? What is the strings program? Strings, meaning having to do with the instruments that are made with strings. Violins, particularly, are made with strings. Cellos also, when we talked about guitars also. But her program was primarily for violins. Um, we also talked about how she can make a difference. How did Roberta Gasparri make a difference? Okay, she came to a school that did not have a music program. She created a music program, and she, she filled a need that these children had in this neighborhood. It was a neighborhood in New York City that the children were not exposed to this type of music before, and they were not exposed to these types of instruments before, and she made it a reality, and she encouraged them, and she gave them direction of how to perform Remember how we talked about how they even got to perform at a very famous performance uh, venue called Carnegie Hall, and that Itzhak Perlman was with them. We learned that music 
can change lives. We did learn this. I want to show you a video of Itzhak Perlman performing with these students. It's really incredible. Come join me. Okay, oh, there we go. We saw here Ishak Perlman playing with the Opus 118 students. How amazing was that? And to hear the beauty of them playing together is really, truly amazing. From these students who started in a small high school in East Harlem to come to this greatness, to be able to play like this in a huge performance with very famous violinists and other violinists you saw were joining them is truly an incredible feat. This is an amazing story and I hope it inspired you maybe to think about great things that you can do. Here's a bibliography of the things that we use today in class. 
I hope that you will enjoy these things and possibly go back to them in the future, the different videos and different articles. Thank you so much for joining me and for working together with me on this amazing journey of learning about Roberta Gasperi and her amazing Opus 118 program in East Harlem. Always remember to inspire yourself to go above and beyond and do whatever you can to make yourself the best that you can be. Believe in yourself, just like Roberta said to believe in herself. She said to her students in the movie that they need to work from here, from the heart, because the power of music can actually come from right here, from your heart. And the power of anything you do can come from your heart. Take note and work hard and you will be able to do whatever you can achieve. Have a great day. Enjoy your English classes and keep learning. Thank you.